Millions of people around the world suffer from pain. Pain that makes every day an excruciating struggle. When Vioxx was first approved by the FDA in May of 1999, consumers were ecstatic at the prospect of getting their lives back. Intended to treat osteoarthritic, menstrual, and acute pain in adults, Vioxx was designed to be a safer painkiller compared to its alternatives. With average annual sales of $2.5 million, Merrick's newest drug quickly became a blockbuster. In just 2003 alone, Vioxx sales accounted for 11% of Merrick's revenue that year. But little did anyone know what fiasco was about to unfold. On September 30, 2004, Merrick voluntarily ordered a withdrawal of Vioxx from the market after studies showed a doubled increase of heart attack and stroke in patients. Approximately 20 million people around the world had been taking Vioxx. It is further estimated this drug caused at least 50,000 deaths. How could Merrick's little miracle pill become the epicenter of one of the biggest drug recall controversies of the past decade? In the next 15 minutes, we will be exploring the tale of Vioxx, from its creation, to how it works, to discussing what can be done in the future to hopefully prevent this catastrophe from repeating itself. Vioxx, or Rofococcib, has a chemical formula of C17H1404S. Its IUPAC name is 4-4-methylsulfophenyl-3-phenyl-5-H-furantuone. What you see here is the structure of the molecule. These are two benzene rings. Here is a furan group. Attached to it is a ketone. On the other side of the molecule, there is a sulfone. Attached to the cell phone is a methyl branch. Normally, during an injury in an animal organism, blood vessels are broken. Platelets, which float around in the bloodstream, coagulate at the site of this injury to prevent blood loss. Platelets, however, do not possess a nucleus. COX or cyclooxygenase enzymes activate platelets to change into a clotting form. Cox enzymes also help the synthesis of prostanoids, which are involved in the inflammatory process. In this video, we will be discussing two types of Cox enzymes, Cox1 and Cox2. Cox1 is involved in the maintenance of normal stomach mucus and kidneys. Cox1 is present in most tissues. Cox2, though, is present primarily at sites of inflammation. General side effects from taking Vioxx may include headache, heartburn, upset stomach, diarrhea, abdominal pain, tenderness, discomfort, nausea, blood in your vomit, bloody black or tarry stools, unexplained weight gain, swelling or water retention, fatigue or lethargy, a skin rash, itching, yellowing of your skin or eyes, flu-like symptoms, or unusual bruising or bleeding. However, the biggest concern for those taking Vioxx and the reason for its withdrawal from the market is a doubled risk of heart attack and stroke. Recall from earlier that COX enzymes play a role in activating platelet coagulation after an injury. When internal blood vessels are damaged or ruptured, platelets will repair the hole in the vessel. Clots may break off the artery wall and start circulating through blood vessels. If they become stuck, they will block off blood flow to the surrounding cells, which is highly dangerous. This is called an embolism. If this block occurs in the heart, the patient will suffer a myocardial infarction, and if in the brain, a stroke. Since COX enzymes cause platelet activation, it was thought that all COX inhibitors reduce the risk of these embolisms. However, it was discovered that this is not true for COX-2 inhibitors. There are three types of prostanoids. Prostaglandins, which cause a sensation of pain, fever, and inflammation, thromboxanes, responsible for vasoconstriction, and prostacillins, responsible for the resolution of the inflammation. Vioxx was unable to suppress the production of thromboxanes, the vasoconstriction chemicals. In fact, Vioxx suppressed prostacillins, the vasodilators. Thus, blood vessels were left with smaller diameters than normal, 
increasing the risk of embolisms. Although Vioxx has now been withdrawn, numerous painkiller alternatives still exist. Aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen are still available. Viox, classified as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or NSAID, was a part of a new class of drugs, the COX-2 inhibitors. Previous painkillers, although also NSAIDs, like aspirin and ibuprofen, inhibited production of all types of COX, both COX-1 and COX-2. This was considered undesirable. As a result of these non-selective NSAIDs blocking COX-1, many patients suffered gastrointestinal ulcers, internal bleeding, and upset stomach. Vioxx and other COX-2 inhibitors were intended to suppress pain without causing these gastrointestinal side effects. Interestingly, one last major COX-2 inhibitor is still available on the market. Celebrex, also known as Celecoxib, was released in 1998 and was the first commercial COX-2 inhibitor drug. However, it currently carries a black box warning, the most severe warning a drug may receive from the FDA. Let's first examine the current drug approval process in the United States. Before any new drug can be marketed, it must be approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The first step is the investigational new drug stage. The sponsor must show the FDA the drug has therapeutic properties and that it's safe for human testing. Sufficient superiority in comparison to placebos must be demonstrated in animal tests. The next step is human testing. The drug is tested in a small group. If proven safe, tests will be conducted on progressively larger groups. Undesirable side effects are monitored. Testing groups can be as big as a few thousand people. This human testing stage tends to take between 8 to 10 years and may cost up to 800 million US dollars. Then the sponsor must submit a new drug application for approval to market the drug. The report is often thousands of pages long, summarizing the data collected from the testing. After the FDA allows the drug to be marketed, data from hospitals and physicians will still continue to be collected. Since the drug is now being used by a larger group, serious side effects may be caught in this stage, potentially leading to a recall. Please note that Merrick voluntarily withdrew Vioxx and was not forced to do so by the FDA or Health Canada. After the withdrawal of Vioxx, the FDA approval process came under fire by critics. Beginning in 1992, a controversial law was passed allowing the FDA to charge user fees to manufacturers. These user fees were intended to speed up the approval process. The extra money was to be used to hire additional drug reviewers. However, critics affirm that by focusing the agency's resources on the approval process, the law left less money for post-approval monitoring. Some assert that financial contributions of the drug companies have also made the FDA less likely to confront them. Vioxx received only a six-month priority review. Through later leaks of Merrick documents, it was exposed that studies as early as 1998 may have suggested the increased risk of cardiac events. Two clinical studies, study 090 in 1998 and Vigor in 1999, indicated that although patients taking Vioxx had fewer gastrointestinal problems than patients taking naproxen, there were a greater number of heart attacks in those taking Vioxx. In fact, in 2001, the FDA warned Merrick to be clear about the drug's cardiovascular side effects. In 2002, both the FDA and Health Canada implemented label warnings that Vioxx should be used with caution in patients with a history of heart disease. The Vioxx recall sparked skepticism of the ethics of direct-to-consumer marketing. Through all these years, I have to say I still look forward to going to school. And I'm pretty sure the kids do too. Beautiful morning. Ask your doctor today about Vioxx. Vioxx for everyday victories. Merrick had spent approximately $500 million in marketing efforts. The safety of other COX-2 inhibitors also came under intense scrutiny. 
Bextra, another COX-2 inhibitor, was withdrawn in 2005 as well. As mentioned previously, Celebrex is the last COX-2 inhibitor on the market. Public health activist groups are demanding that Celebrex be taken off the market too. What could have been done differently? Instead of trying to create another blockbuster drug aimed at a large group of consumers, perhaps companies should focus on niche medications designed for specific groups of patients, a segmented strategy. Perhaps the use of Vioxx should have been restricted to patients with a low risk of cardiovascular disease but with a history of gastrointestinal problems. Perhaps my biggest victory is to be able to plan my day around my life instead of my pain. The story of Vioxx is a sad tale of the rise and fall of what was going to be the next miracle drug. After Merrick's cover-ups, withholding of information, and mass advertising, many families suffered an even bigger pain than arthritis, losing a family member.